Welcome to On the Ballot with Ballotpedia, where we take a closer look at the top political stories of the day. Ballotpedia connects people to politics by providing neutral, nonpartisan, and reliable information on our government, how it works, and where it's headed. I'm Victoria Rose, and thanks for being with us. Today, I'm joined by Joshua Spivak to reflect on the political recall efforts we saw around the country last year. You can find the link to Ballotpedia's 2023 recall report, which just came out last week, at the link in our show notes. Josh is a senior fellow at the Hugh L. Carey Institute at Wagner College. He's also the publisher of the Recall Elections blog and the author of the 2021 book, Recall Elections, From Alexander Hamilton to Gavin Newsom. And he was previously on the show in February 2023. So we're very happy to welcome back Josh Spivak. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. So it's been a year. Anything new going on? Uh, There were a lot of recalls this year. Actually, this year was noteworthy for being more successful, that the recalls, um, when they got to the ballot, were more likely to remove the official than, I think, in any year that I've ever seen. That being said, there there have been years where there have been as many recalls get to the ballot, uh, 2018, 2012, 2011, but... What's really kind of interesting was that it's sort of a return to that, to normalcy. Uh, The COVID years had many fewer recalls get to the ballot, though there were more attempts. um, And now we're we're kind of back to where we were before. Yeah, let's put some numbers out there. So last year, Ballotpedia covered 284 recall efforts against 418 officials. Of those 418, 77 officials were recalled. So that's a little over 18%. Uh, which is the highest percentage of officials removed from office since 2018. Uh, We'll talk about specific themes and states that we noticed over the last year. But in the grand scheme of things, Josh, how significant is the higher success rate we saw last year in recall efforts? It's hard to say. It's always very hard to understand why they're more successful in one year than in another. The one instance that recalls were less successful in all these years that I've been in since 2011 was 2021, when during the the pandemic, there was a drop in recalls that got to the ballot, and perhaps not surprisingly, more people survived. Other than that, there is this bias towards people being kicked out, which kind of makes sense. You know, if you're getting the signatures, if you're doing that work, you're probably going to succeed. Very interesting. You mentioned um, or made a good point on your blog this year that these numbers that I just threw out there they're almost certainly off because it's very hard to track all the recalls going on in the country, especially at the local level. So why is that the case? Well, there's a few reasons. One is there's no clearinghouse. Uh, the closest that you have is Ballotpedia. Um, and as we've seen, it's it's hard to just find them and you get a Google News alert and that's where you find out about it or something like that. Uh, another reason, and this is you know an unfortunate one over the years, um, so many local newspapers have gone out of business. So many are beyond are behind paywalls that we're not seeing them. And sometimes we'll see it years later. Uh, I've had that a lot where just something pops up uh, three years later and it's like, oh, well, I'll add it to the list. Yeah, we're also like not likely to see it unless it actually makes the ballot on like a city or county website, correct? Like we're not going to catch the potential recall efforts right? Unless outside of the news. Right, if there's a news story or that. Otherwise, you know, and maybe there's a Facebook thing that we'll hear about. But usually there, there's got to be some news. And since these are very localized offices, it frequently doesn't get anywhere. So Michigan had the most officials targeted for recall at 141 last year, according to our count. That's the second year in a row they've led the country in officials targeted for recall. In 2022, there were 133. And it's kind of a surprise because more often than not, it's California leading the way, which makes sense because they have four times the amount of people. But can you explain why so many officials are being targeted for recalls in Michigan? Well, I've always seen Michigan as a state that has a lot of recalls. Um, They actually changed the law in 2012 that made it significantly harder to do recalls, but it didn't work to the full degree. So they added in a um, clarity and factualness hearing, which makes it much more onerous for those uh, petitioners that have to go through the ballot several times to get the petitions approved. 
uh, to start the signature process. And they also got rid of special elections. So the recalls have to be held on two separate dates. So that could be part of it that they just all those recalls got shoved on to those dates. But really, um, Michigan has a lot of officials and it may be that it's also the Midwest. Um, maybe there's more economic dislocation in Michigan that, that results in a push for recalls. Uh, California, it always makes sense that California would have a lot just because there's so many people. But I've always seen Michigan as the state that has just so many happening. Yeah, California also has that direct democracy history. That I think that also kind of motivates their recall efforts. Um, or are there any other states that stuck out to you in the crowd last year for recalls? There's been some in, in just a number of the Midwest states. We're seeing Nebraska get involved a little more, Ohio, which is not known as a, a recall state. There was this very, very odd one in Dalton. Um, but that was really 2022. And this they were trying to get rid of this mayor. And that's been in the news because she just spent a ton of money and has a different job. And it was uh, it was just in the news this week. So that one stands out. Um, but actually, the one issue that really kind of grabbed me is wind and solar power, uh, not anti-wind and solar power, I would say, for ideological reasons, but more for NIMBY, not in my backyard reasons. Mm. And you see, especially in Michigan and Wisconsin, voters opposed to expanding uh, wind and solar towers, and they're voting out Republicans. They just don't want those in their in their neighborhood. So that's that's pretty interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So it, just like in 2022, in 2023, we saw city council officials were the subject to the most recall efforts with 173 officials targeted, which is kind of much higher than the average of 142 that we saw between 2010 and 2022. Uh, this year, they accounted for just over 41% of recall targets across all office types. So why do you think city council officials specifically get targeted at such a high frequency? And then what might be behind the higher tally this past year? I think it always makes sense that city council would be the people targeted. There's more of them. They have a broader mandate to vote to to make changes. They're not generally partisan offices, or if they are, the town is or city or village is probably, you know, completely one side or another. So the partisanship is is stripped out of it for the most part. And they're the ones that do the stuff that people don't like, like development issues, like zoning, uh, like taxes, and very popular among recalls, firing police chiefs, firing city managers. So those make sense. School boards really took off during COVID, and it's it's tampered down, though there's still uh, some of those based on, not on COVID anymore, but based on book bans and things like that. So those have still been in the news, but you can see that that may have less of an impact. Also, they're just not as uh, high profile. Yeah, they they only accounted for about 23% of recalls this past year, but they did lead the way, like you said, in 2021. I was wondering if you had any thoughts about a little bit more about why they declined. Do you think voters are less concerned about school board members than they once were or school board members avoiding policy areas or discussions that might put them in hot water with voters? I think there's some avoidance, but I think the big thing was that they were on the front lines in COVID, that that the subject of school shutdowns was the single big issue in COVID in many ways. And so that's where suddenly they go from people who are being ignored to a high high pressure, high policy issues. And uh, we saw just so many recalls attempted against them, though very few got to the ballot and almost all of the officials survived. So they mm-hmm. they were basically ratified by the voters. It, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the book ban is now book ban issues. LGBTQ issues are still we're still seeing a lot of them with school board members, but not the same sure. uh, impact as something like sure. COVID. You kind of mentioned um, one specific recall already, the Dalton one. But do you have any other examples of recalls that you found particularly interesting from this past year? Well, so there was the in Oregon that we had the first um, the first state legislator face to recall since 2018, and it was an interesting one in that he was a, a union member, former union official, 
facing a recall over cannabis issues from a union. And he easily won 90% of the vote in his favor. So it was an example of a recall kind of blowing up in their face. Uh, we're seeing this in Michigan a bit. There's There were a whole slew of recalls against Michigan state legislators that none of them have gotten to the ballot. And it, it feels like it's an attempt to reverse Michigan's um, that the Democrats have managed to gain a trifecta uh, control over the, both the houses of the legislature and the governor's mansion in the state. Uh, interestingly enough, it was the first time they had it since 1983, and they lost it in 1983 due to a recall. Oh, wow. Uh, it's the first time they had the state Senate, sorry, since 1983. And that's when they, they lost it due to two recalls. Uh, back then, and they've been out since, probably the most effective state legislative recall in history. That actually is a good example of the recall not working out so well. So they're threatening these recalls, perhaps to hope to gain power, but Michigan's Republican Party seems to be in complete disarray, and it, it feels like a temper tantrum, and that doesn't work too well. There was also two others that were Pretty interesting. In um, in Michigan, there were a battery component manufacturing parts uh, recall, um, and they were kicked out. There were six officials were kicked out and two resigned. Uh, so that and it, the part of the complaint was that this battery component manufacturing facility had ties to China. Uh, and in Grand Forks, North Dakota, there was a recall mm. because of this corn mill that the U.S. Air Force, and it was China-based company that owned it, and the Air Force claimed it would represent the national security threat. So that was kind of an interesting one, but um, not the same result. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize recalls stretched into international politics. <laughs> right. Once they get there, they're, they suddenly jump on it. Um, you know, so uh, actually a lot of the, there may be some interesting recalls coming up, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, that's my next question. It's hard to predict exactly what's going to happen in 2024, but what do you expect the recall landscape to look like? Are there any noteworthy differences when it comes to an on and off cycle election year for recalls? You know, I've always wondered that. Like, does it matter? But I would kind of think the off year would be the year that there'd be more recalls, but it doesn't seem to work that way. There's like one of the lowest years was 2017. 2013 had much lower than 2012, but sometimes it, it's just sort of random and they're they're pretty close to the same thing. Look, this year had much more than last year uh, in terms of success. It's pretty close, pretty similar in results in total recalls that got to the ballot. So it's not clear that one year will affect another. Um, you would just assume it would. Mm-hmm. Uh, but among the big recalls we'd be following are in the Bay Area. There's a recall attempt, a very serious, and it sounds like they have a really good chance of getting to the ballot, recall against the DA, which is another um, recall along the lines of the San Francisco uh, and also the one attempted in L.A. against progressive prosecutorial movement, um, the idea that you would take a prosecutor and uh, that a prosecutor would take a kind of be different than the traditional model of this crusading guy, crusading official trying to uh, lock people up. Um, And the result is that the, that may be an interesting recall and it could be another blow to that movement, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, There's also a recall attempt against the Oakland mayor, uh, but that just started. We'll see what happens there. That's uh, Both of those are operating under laws that are kind of older, certainly the Alameda DA, and there's a lot of questions about that. What what will happen? How are they going to deal with that? Very interesting. Well, that's all the questions I have for you, but I want to thank you again for coming on and sharing your recall expertise with us. We always love uh, diving into this with you. Thanks very much. This was great. And for our listeners, you can learn more about recall elections at the links in our show notes. We'll be back next week with another episode. Make sure you subscribe to On the Ballot wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Victoria Rose, and thanks for listening.